and welcome to another Zach Harnish video and this time I am doing a deck profile of my Clifford deck which I took to the Isle of Wight tournament just uh, yesterday. Um, I went undefeated with it, obviously you know this is like the last time I can actually use it before the ban list changes, um, but I thought I'd just go through it because I wanted to try and explain some of the reasons why I actually went undefeated as opposed to losing like some of the other players did. So, uh, play triple scout, which is obvious. Um, you need to be able to search. And the one monolith, monolith is really good. It should probably go to two when we drop the, drop the next scout and the next ban list because um, you will win a lot of games if you get your reasonable setup and then you just get free draws with this card. That's often how you'll end up winning. Um, I play three carrier and one helix. Um, sorry, two helix, not, um, missing one helix, which I will probably put in. I'm not sure about carrier at the moment, because a lot of people will remove their own fields. Um, admittedly it's useful for the OTK for pushing in, but in a lot of times if you're going up against Yosenju or against Necros, then they will actually get rid of their own stuff and leave a Valk in hand, so carrier is like a useless card at that point, apart from tribute, and it's easy, like it's better to have back row removal like helix. Um, so I, I think I'd rather have a third helix at the moment. Uh, one shell was really good. Um, won me a few matches because um, piercing damage is really key in a couple of cases. Uh, two disc and two stealth. Um, the stealth OTK combo is really good. Uh, admittedly, like they're pushing more than eight thousand. Um, but I'll come on to that when we get to the laser clip. Um, obviously, uh, these two work really well together, um, and you kind of have to play stealth so that your opponent can't respond. When he, when I was in the semi-final Clifford matchup, um, it was whoever could resolve their stealth in the best way, so that their opponent couldn't actually respond with anything. And th this is just this is really good in that matchup. Uh, then I also tech two copies of Swift Scarecrow, um, brilliant card because. If anyone is going up against Clifford, they're going to try and OTK you, and this card saved me in so many matches. It was just, it was amazing, because no one expects you to play it anyway. Um, a lot of people are playing like Madolche Knights, so you can't actually drop stuff in your graveyard, but having this, when your opponent gets like their whole setup, and they've got everything on their field, and then they attack, and you go, no, sort of scarecrow, and then the next turn, you bring out your own field and wreck everything they have. It's just really good. Uh, so that's all the monsters. Um, one laser clip. Laser clip is amazing because it is, first of all, searchable because it's a clear card. Um, you play it with the stealth. Um, so you want to you wanna have a setup that will allow you to, so let's say you have um, a monster on board with um, a sacrifice equipped. Then next turn you, you bring out your stealth, get your search off, searching for a disc. Um, because in a laser clip they can't respond to that, uh, they can respond to it. So anyway, with stealth you'll then bounce your scout, so you'll get two searches in the same turn, uh, which will allow you to then set up your pendulum scale, or get more sacrifices, or whatever you need, um, and you'll be able to like pendulum extra monsters on, and then you can summon your disc as well. Um, so chances are you're using like a helix or a carrier, so you'll be able to get the effects of those twice in the same turn, Plus you'll get the double summons from disc, plus you'll get the non-response from stealth, which makes it just an amazing, amazing collection to work with. Uh, so that's why we run the one. Um, currently on three sacrifice, which will obviously go down to just the one. Um, at the moment I'm thinking that, you know, the, it's, it's still searchable, so it's not too much of a problem, but it does mean that you have to debate whether or not you want to set up first turn with like one carrier and a sacrifice. Because if they get rid of your sacrifice, you have no searchability and no extra summons. So this is going to become something that like you search out when you're about to push for game instead. Um, but it has like it has four effects on one card, so it couldn't stay really. And the other thing which is going to get hit is snatch steel. So that's just going to come up. But that was really good. Um, it was more good for my opponents because they used it on me a lot more than I used it on them. But it was still a great card. Uh, two pop duality because. Don't care too much about having to just norm summon. Um, like this one, the Clifford and the Volcanics matchup because I was able to search out cards I actually wanted that I sided in. Obviously, triple summoners up. You have 
four targets, so you might as well just play three of them. Uh, Upstart Goblin, which I did side out a couple of times, just because I would rather see a sided card than give my opponent 1,000 life points. But consistency and speed is pretty important, so for against really fast matchups you keep this in, but against like slower things like you send you and in a couple of cases raccoons were getting pretty slow so I could just drop this and then it didn't matter. Um, triple MST because I was expecting a lot more back row and a lot more uh, cliff than I actually saw but uh, it was still good. It was still like any time I actually needed it I saw it so um, there was never a time when I saw it and I didn't need it which is what you really want from a card. Uh, I also played two Mirror Force which is a little bit unconventional, but it's the same logic as with Scarecrow. People don't expect this. They expect you to like set rubbish like Summoners Up. There was one case when I set one of these with a Summoners Up. Um, my opponent used uh, Helix to dis uh, it was either Helix or Stealth to destroy or, or bounce one of the cards. They bounced the Summoners Up and then they attacked and my Mirror Force at that point then won me the game. So that was a bit lucky, but they, were, like, they weren't really expecting any problems from back row anyway. Um, so they still went through with the attack, even though they couldn't actually get rid of both of them. Uh, which is a bit silly, but it's, it's what happens. Um, then Floodgates is still fine, so playing Triple Vanities. I, it, I was like, oh, this is the last day I can actually do it, I'm going to play all three. Uh, admittedly, you know, it's not good in Mirror Match. Um, so, uh, game two, sided them out immediately. Um, but we're going to go to 1-1, one. One it's just going to be splashable on everything now. Everyone's going to play 1, because... You, you have to if it's a good card that's that one. Um, I think like Solemn Warning might come out, it really depends. I think the big four is going to have a bit of a change up with this, but it's still a really good card, even a one. The only issue is it's not searchable. Um, double Skill Drain and one Recreate. I played the one Recreate because it was searchable, um, <clears throat> and I feel like more than six Floodgate cards is too many. Um, this is actually like really good in such one. If I never saw the skill drain, but I had a decent setup, and like if I didn't see skill drain or vanities, then I could search out recreate, and that would set me up. And this is like a bit costly, so that's the main problem with skill drain. Obviously, this is going to go to one. Uh, I'm not sure about playing double recreate because I don't want to draw it, but uh, that's that's the entire main deck. Um, forty cards, obviously, because you don't play upstart unless you're playing forty cards. Um, side deck is. Pretty standard. Um, there are a few weird things in here. So we got one Majesty's Fiend and one Vanities. Uh, I would play two Majesties, uh, but I don't have to. I'm thinking next format I might go double Stormforth and double Vanities in the main deck just to deal with all the special summons that are going to happen. Uh, but that really depends on what actually happens with the, the format. Um, one Towers, which was amazing because in game. Two in the cliff up matchup, I summon this. I, I lost. I lost round one. Summon this in game two, um, and he scoops after uh, like one turn of not being able to do anything because I got rid of all of his fields and was like really far ahead with monolith and three draws from this. So this is insane. Um, double Lancia for Necro's hate and kind of good against like it's good against Infernoids and um, Volcanics. Then double Spell Shattering, which I just picked up. Um, didn't see either of them in the Cliff Walk, which was a bit sad, but they're not really good in anything else. I suppose you could kind of play them in your Senju and maybe in Fire Fist, but there's not much that you can like play them against. Um, obviously double Stormforth for the extra summons, and uh, stealing your opponent's monster for summons is good. Uh, double Imperial Iron same logic as last year, same matchups. It's just really good against Necros when you can resolve it. Um, Double Shadow Imprisoning for Shadows and BA. Um, Majesty Swing for BA as well. Like, there's not much they can do. Uh, also, Majesty Swing against Necros, he can attack in, they can't Valk, which is awesome. Um, and then Double Mind Crush, because it's really good this format against Bujin, Yosenju, um, anything that searches is just really good. And then the extra deck, obviously, you have to play the two Digimon tokens because they are completely staple in this deck, and if you don't play them, you lose to everything, so you have to play them. Um, and then, um, it's just, we also play Heart and Draco, 85, a 7, a German Big Eye, Diamond Dyer, Steel Swarm Roach, number 103, and a second number 103, because 
this is what you really need in your extra deck. Went into these uh, zero times at the whole event. It was really good. Uh, best card in the deck. Ritual Beast, Ulti Cannonhawk, this card is so good, it's so broken, people look at it and they're like, oh no, we're gonna lose, and then you don't play it, and it's great. Uh, yeah. So that was, uh, the deck profile for my, um, undefeated, in terms of matches, Clifford deck. Uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you... Um, want to see some more deck profiles, some more dueling videos, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching this Zach Garnish video. If you have any comments or suggestions that you would like to make, don't forget you can leave those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. You can see more videos related to this one over here. And if you just want some random stuff from my channel, then click on one of these things over here.